I am the person that you want to invite to your event if there will be swag. Because I will proudly take it home and video tape it, is taping a thing, and put it up on YouTube and show it to all of my people because I love free swag. Look at this cool stuff. And the t-shirt, it needed a little, a little trim because I'm picky about my t-shirts. But it was awesome and I love it. And I'm here to show you the t-shirt. And I got glasses in this swag bag. Oh yeah, that's right. Swag! Woo! yourself a very witchy vlogmas 2018 day one hello my magical friends welcome to day one of my vlogmas which is gonna be different this year because most of it's going to be live streaming and i'm telling you right up front please Meet me here at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time so I'm not sitting here alone in the morning with my cup of coffee. I know that's not very early, but that's the earliest I could figure I could do it. Feeling a little bright-eyed and bushy-tailed enough to meet up with you all. What I'm gonna do is use that live streaming time from 8.30 a.m. to who knows? Could be 15 minutes, could be 45. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how I feel. We'll see who shows up and what questions you have. But the main idea for me is this is an awesome opportunity to answer some of your questions. So ask me what you want. What do you wanna know about magic, creating the kick-ass life of your dreams, all the things you hear me talking about on the podcast, what do you wanna know? That's not really a vlog, but I will be sprinkling like this first one, little vlogs throughout. So this first vlog I am dedicating with so much love, all the love to my amazing patrons who support me over on Patreon. And it's my behind the scene adventures at Patreon 2018, which was an invitation only conference here in Los Angeles for Patreon creators. I don't really know what invitation only means. I don't know who all they invited, but it was exciting to get the invitation as invitation only. <laughs> there was something about that that made me feel special. And speaking of feeling special, I'm the most special special because I have a name tag. <laughs> my badge. Check out my badge. This makes me an official Patreon creator of awesomeness complete with pink whatever this is. I'm just gonna wear this around town, like wear it to the grocery store. <laughs> Look how important I am. I should probably tell you too that I'm planning on doing 20 of these suckers, 20 videos in December for Vlogmas this year as a challenge to myself to knock the dust off and to reconnect with you all and just to have some fun. Vlogmas is really fun. It's hard. It's really, really hard. So my hat's off to those of you who are doing it properly as like a real vlog situation. I'm only just gonna be sprinkling a few vlogs. The ones that I keep saying, keep. I thought they'd be coming out in November. I thought they'd be coming out in September. I have so much vlog footage that I need to see manifest as an actual vlog that I'm like, I cannot end 2018 with the footage hanging over my head. So Vlogmas will serve all those purposes for 20 days until the winter solstice. The first spark of the light half of the year. I have a question. When did you first fall in love with YouTube? Like what was the year when you became a YouTube viewer? Do you even remember? Comment, comment down below. What year did you get hooked on the tube? I think for me it was 2009 maybe going into 2010. And what really got me was it was the stuff that was like blowing the lid off the mainstream. And that was like everything you've ever been taught about how things are was wrong. And it's actually the opposite. So I was really into, I was into raw veganism. I was into some conspiracy theories and this really out there new age stuff and kind of radical doctors coming out with some like new edgy ideas. Anything that was like controversial on the edge and like flipping the script on what this reality is 
was really interesting to me and hooked me in. And I was a big fan of Lilu Massé back in the day. And she had this interview show. I think she still does. But she was kind of like trying to be the next Oprah. I think that was literally her goal. And she would interview a lot of spiritual people, a lot of Hay House authors, sometimes people that were kind of on the edge of being conspiracy theorists or full-blown. I think there are a couple of full-blown conspiracy theorists. theorists and uh, she was very curious about raw veganism. And I think she had a period where she did that. And so... We had a lot in common, and she did something called the 100 Day Challenge, which was, it was like a law of attraction thing, and you would set a challenge for 100 days and then join this community where you could track your progress and support each other. And I actually, I still have a friend from back then, Julia Martin, shout out to the flying cat. But I decided to do my 100 challenge making videos and or at least tracking it partly on video so my first youtube video was in 2011 may i think 2011 for lilu massey's 100 things challenge but then it didn't take long it was just a few videos in before i like scooched on over to the witchy side of things because i was also a fan of people like tiptoe chick and charming pixie flora and Jackie Dubois, I think, was still fairly new. She had a show called The Real Witches of Orange County that I loved back in the day. And I, it didn't take long before the witchy community just sucked me right in. And that's because of the quality of the people. It was an awesome community, like super engaged. Back in the day, we would make video responses to each other. So you could have conversations going on online. And you kind of got to know not everybody in the community, but you would see names again and again and again because it was still pretty small. But because I'm a person, you know, I lived in Hollywood for so long and, and when you first move to Hollywood and you're trying to make it, you're like acting in movies for free. Uh, when I started screenwriting, you would write screenplays for free on spec is what it's called. And this drove my family crazy. They would ask me like, what are you doing? And I'd tell them and they'd be like, are you getting paid? And I was always like, no, I'm doing it for the exposure, you know, <laughs> or for the hope that somebody will notice me. So when I started on YouTube, I was in my mid thirties and I had already been around that block of like making things and not getting paid and then having to explain it to people and just feeling the judgment. <laughs> and I remember being like, am I really going to do this? I'm going to make all these videos. I made so many that first year. I was just like making all the content and I did all the videos, you know, that new witches on YouTube make of like their altar set up and whatever sabbat it is and talking about all the witchy things. And I was like, what am I doing here? I'm not making any money. <laughs> what am I doing? And I think what I was doing it didn't take me long, actually. I launched an actual business out of it in March 2012 is when I took a pivot, a big pivot. And I was like, okay, I'm going to create a business out of this and I'm going to start offering programs and eBooks and all this stuff. And I did that very successfully, I am proud to say. But even before that, there was so much value in it for me because it was really about connection. It was about you guys. It was about friends. It was about being able to talk about something as weird as witchcraft and feel understood. And or any of the number of things that I was into. They were all weird. <laughs> I wanted, wanted to talk about weird things. And that's when I realized like weird moss day. The weird in me sees the weird in you. Whatever you're into, I guarantee you there's a tribe online that is into it too. So I understand why people just do YouTube as a hobby. But again, I was in my mid thirties and I was going through a very turbulent time in my life when I started on YouTube. And so it didn't take long before I was like, I need to take care of myself. I'm a mom. I need to make sure that if I'm gonna spend this much energy doing something, I have to turn it into a business. I would be interested to know too, how many of you have ever made any YouTube videos at all? And how many of you actually have a YouTube-based 
business. There are so many witches online now, I can't keep track of all of them. But what I have been able to do, what I've been super privileged to be able to do is to work with people behind the scenes. I do these coaching calls called Biz Witch. I do Biz Witch coaching and I've gotten to work with other YouTube witches that want to like pivot into having their own online business or people who maybe wanted to start making YouTube videos that have never made one before but they want to see it as a business. This is so fascinating that we can sit here and hopefully create something of value, either entertainment value or teach somebody something, offer something in this really creative out there, brand new in terms of the scope of humanity format and make a living doing it is so bizarre. And what got me really hyped up and thinking about this is when I went to Patreon giving them all the free love today because they deserve it. They deserve it. And when I went to Patreon, they treated us so well. It was like a two and a half day conference and it was just set up really beautifully. And the staff, there's like 179 people that work at Patreon and there were many of them there. And you could ask them anything you wanted and they would answer you and they were so real and down to earth and you got this sense that they cared, which re I really appreciate it. I've never worked, like who is YouTube? Who are the people behind YouTube? Have you ever been able to get a hold of YouTube? <laughs> customer service if you have a problem you know like no or Google or Twitter like who are the people behind this like we might know that Mark Zuckerberg is Facebook but does Mark Zuckerberg care about you <laughs> when I went to Patreon, I had the feeling that they do care they do care and it was a series of workshops and presentations and the last, the final presentation of the conference was Jack Conte, and he is the guy who created Patreon. And he shared his creator story and the reason Patreon exists. And I thought it was so cool that I had to share it with you guys before I show you my vlog footage. So if you don't know, Patreon is completely changing the game. They are, they have set up a system where creators can interact with their friends and fans in a really personal way behind a paywall. And basically you get to become a patron of the arts when you support people there. And so the whole creative community becomes very, very democratic because you vote with your dollars and you get to support the creators that you love so they can pay their bills so they can keep making content. It's genius. So Jack Conti, back in the day, he was making a lot of YouTube videos and he would get like super into it. He was in a band. <laughs> He's still in a band. He was a musician and he made this video. It took him three months to make the video. It was a music video and he created the Starship Enterprise, like the cockpit of the Starship Enterprise in his garage <laughs> to film the video inside. And his hands, he showed us pictures of his hands after creating this thing. They were just like raw, just falling apart and raw from whatever manual labor that it took to create this thing. And it took $10,000, if I'm remembering correctly, I think, yeah, $10,000, three months, and some busted hands to create a video that profited him $200 through YouTube. And he was like, fuck uh, this, uh, <laughs> Like, what am I doing with my life? And that is when he got the idea from Patreon and completely changed so many people's lives, including mine now. Like I have fully committed to going full out with Patreon. I am loving it. I love the connection with the people that I've already met there, the people who have signed up to be my patrons. I love you guys. Thank you so much for giving me hope and just this fresh perspective on the world. And I will say Patreon gave me that too because I met amazing people. I met this guy. He was super friendly and cool in person. And I'll show you some footage of him. His name is Jay Swanson. And he's a self-published author. He writes science fiction, fantasy, and he vlogs. 
And when I met him, I was like, oh, hey, he's cool. He's very friendly. We, we stood around and talked kind of in a group of people. What I would do is if I got somebody's business card, I would go home after the conference that day and then watch their YouTube videos or check out their podcast. And when I went to check out Jay's stuff, I realized like immediately the first vlog I saw of his on YouTube, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Why am I interested in this? This is not my thing. Although I guess it is like being a writer and using Patreon as a platform to support yourself as a creator of any kind, a writer of any kind is deeply interesting to me. But he's an expat living in Paris and he's vlogging every single day. I think it takes him about five hours a day to vlog and edit the footage. It is hardcore. But what I found was I could not look away. I ended up watching a whole bunch of his videos and now I'm a fan. It's been well over a month since I went to Patreon and I'm still watching his videos. I've watched many of his older videos. Now I'm a total fan. And it's just fascinating how watching a human, <laughs> he's really good at it, but watching a human live their life and their daily struggle from day to day to day can really engage you in that way. And he's one of the reasons that I was thinking, I just wanted like get back on YouTube and make some stuff because I'm valuing it again as a fan. I think he got me excited as a fan. Today's vlog at 844. You wanna see my slideshow? I got, I, 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 I developed slides and everything. Then I met this woman named Kendra, who was divalicious. I saw her, I was like sitting a couple rows back from her. She had on like a money print, like this money print, I think it was a top. And then she had this big money print bag that said Kali on the side of it. And she was just so like super done, super put together and very sassy looking. So after that presentation ended, I like went and introduced myself to her and got her card and was kind of asking her about herself a little bit. Went home, started watching her videos. I was like, I have to have her on the podcast. I know for sure that my listeners are going to love her. I asked her to be on the show and she said that she would love to do that. So we're trying to set up a time for that. But whether I get her on the show or not, you should totally check out Pretty Boss TV because I know for sure that you will love her. She's very, very magical. When you get to a certain level of a vibration within yourself, you have no doubt because you know that what you are putting out into this universe is from love. Oh, and then the Try Guys. <laughs> the Try Guys by far gave the best presentation of the entire conference. They were so on fire. They're just naturally hilarious. Like funny, funny, funny. That kind of humor that comes from being very observant about life and just being able to like tweak it enough to where you see yourself in the humor, but you can't help but laugh. They have that, but then also their presentation was so informative. I learned so much. I was like taking notes as fast as I could and laughing at the same time. I'm taking a break from using Facebook. And I've chosen to tell you here upon my Facebook. I hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think. And I will be back here tomorrow live at 8.30 a.m. for day two of Witchy Vlogmas. Welcome to my car. I am on my way to the Magic Box. The Magic Box in downtown LA for Patreon. For Patreon. It's Thursday night, the night after Halloween, and I am just going there to register and meet the people and see what is up. Patreon 2018! Here I am walking into the very cozy room they had set up at the entrance. For those of us who wanted to stock up on gum, dental floss, lint brushes, mints, fishy crackers, granola bars, anything we thought we needed to survive the upcoming days ahead, the signage at Patreon was awesome. Throughout the entire conference, here we are meeting and greeting each other like you do. The swag, the swag was amazing. Here are the lovely people delivering the swag and you could record a podcast live on site. How cool is is that Patreon knows what Patreon is doing. Yay, here we go. Day two, there's my creator badge, snakeskin pants, my gear. There is downtown LA. I don't know if we would count this as 
day two. The last night was just the registration and the meet and greet, and it was awesome. We got a lot of good swag. I met some really cool people. And so today is like the workshops and the presentations from early, early, early morning tonight, and then we do that again tomorrow. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. But first, we're gonna take a seat at the main stage to receive some very compelling information about how to kick ass as a Patreon creator. And then of course, we'll meet some more awesome people. Check out this lady, an expert on budgeting better than Bowie. <laughs> One of the very awesome speakers at PatreonCon. Tell us about yourself. I go by Broke Ass Stewart. I'm a writer, I'm a performer, I'm an activist. I'm um, a general fire starter. I'm here to speak uh, at Patreon about um, how to build, build a personal brand. There is Kat. And those are just some of the lovely creators that I met in the in-between times, in-between presentations. The workshops were incredible. There's my incredible lunch. It's all incredible, but they did have these really informative lunch and learn sessions where they provided lunch and you could sit there and eat your gluten-free salad. They had vegan options. And of course, like the dork I am, I took lots of notes and I learned so much. I already can't wait to go back to PatriotCon 2019. I'm ready, let's go. What a thrill, there is no traffic today, this morning, Saturday morning, and that is good because I'm running a little bit late and I really want to get to this workshop on finance. I'm a little bit tired. This is a very intense experience, but I love it. And what I love is going home after the conference and checking out the people that I met there and watching their YouTube channels and listening to their podcasts. So many talented people. Also, we need to take a moment to admire my La La Land swing shoes that I love and my brocade pants, woohoo! That is one of my best life hacks for trying to get your energy up. Go shallow. Focus on what you look like. Vanity is a healer. <laughs> Look how cute this all is. Isn't this gorgeous? I love it. Bicycle coffee. This is what I had in mind when I was driving down the freeway this morning. The bicycle coffee. And here we all are trying to caffeinate our brains and perk ourselves up for the incredible content ahead. A whole day of awesome information. The presentations were amazing. I insist that you try the Try Guys. The Try Guys, those are them. Wow, so impressive. But really all of the speakers had so much to offer. This is an incredible top-notch conference. I was completely blown away. And maybe I got a little bit tired halfway through. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to my office. Makeup bag, tote bag, coffee on the floor, lunch bag, shoes. I'm sitting out in the parking lot in 90 degree weather. <laughs> I thought I could come out here and take a nap. One of the things I love about working from home is if I'm tired, I can go take a nap. And we are in, during the conference, we are, uh, sorry, this is shaky. We're underground in the basement with like dim lights. It's, they, they turn the lights up and down depending on what's going on. But I, just listening to people talk like all day, even though it's super interesting and super informative, I, the last 45 minutes, I was like, should I drive all the way home to try to take a nap? I don't wanna leave and miss what's coming up. Maybe I'll go take a nap out in my car. And it was actually 95, but I've opened the doors and windows and got it down to 90 in here. And you can't take a nap. Look what I'm wearing. You can't take a nap in this. <laughs> in 90, in a 90 degree car. Maybe this is a reflection of being 45 years old. <laughs> the reef, a creative habitat. And there is the big, big chair. And there is the super sunny Los Angeles day and the parking lot I just took a nap in or tried to and failed miserably. <laughs> and yet there I am looking all bright eyed and bushy tailed and trying my best to be super studious. Something I think that you all would appreciate about this conference is the diversity. It was a super diverse crowd and there was diversity up on the stage with the people giving the presentations. And then there was this wall where you could share your creator story, and of course mine was, I make magic, love, 
Hippie Witch. That's my podcast. You know that, right? I hope you're subscribed. Hippie Witch. Magic for a new age. I met so many interesting people. There was a man there with autism who is a creator on Patreon. There were plenty of people of color, trans representation. It was awesome. So I'm going to do that. Is that okay? So that's it. Day one of Vlogmas 2018. What do you think? How did you like it? I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please go over to Facebook or Twitter or wherever you hang out online and share it with your friends. Let them know there is this kooky kick-ass switch on YouTube doing Vlogmas this year. And if you really, really liked it, maybe you'll consider joining me over on Patreon. Of course, there's a link down below and a little bit of Patreon bonus footage at the end here. I just lost a ring. That can't, I have to wear my ring. They're magical rings. <laughs> Keeping it real with Joe on Patreon. That's my new, that's my new um, <laughs> theme song. I am full of theme songs. I think if I practice a little bit, I could talk entirely in jingles and theme songs. <laughs> Speaking of just creating random fly by the seat of my pants content, these, all my rings are very important and have meaning to me. And it bugged me that that ring went flying off. My fingers are getting skinnier. Is this an aging thing? I don't know what's happening. I know your fingers shrink and grow as you move from like summer to winter, but I've had these rings for years. The one that just threw off, I've had for, flew off, I've had. My God, what does this mean? What does this mean? <laughs> Keeping things real with Joe on Patreon.